All right, guys, time for another teamwork build. Let's get into it. Today, we're building a Shadow Bloodline Sorcerer. The Shadow Bloodline will give us the Occult Spell List, which I consider to be the best teamwork spell list in this system. It'll also give us a bunch of darkness-based spells, including Darkness, Chilling Darkness, and Phantasmal Killer. It will also give us the Occultism and Stealth Skills, as well as the Dim the Light Focus Spell. When we cast a spell with a darkness or shadow trait, we can use a reaction and a focus spell to immediately attempt a stealth check to hide. We can make this stealth check even if we don't have cover or concealment. You cease being hidden at the end of your turn unless you move into cover or otherwise become concealed. And this build is all about the darkness. So what better ancestry than the Fetchling? And we're going to be picking up the Changeling Heritage, because there's a couple of Changeling feats we want to take for this build. For background, you can pick anything as long as you get the starting stats you need, which are Strength and Constitution 10, Dexterity and Intelligence 14, Wisdom 12, and Charisma 18. So we're a spellcaster, so we don't get a class feat at first level, but we do get an Ancestry feat, and we're going to take... Shadow Blending. So if we're concealed by dim light or darkness, and a creature attempts to find us, we can use a reaction to increase the DC of the flat check by 2. So we're hard to find when we're in dim light or darkness. At level 2, we'll want to pick up a Familiar. Familiars have a ton of abilities that are going to help out any spellcaster. Cantrip Connection, Familiar Focus, and Spell Delivery are just a few examples. Right now, we get two Familiar Abilities per day. Cantrip Connection will give us an extra cantrip in our repertoire that we can change every single day. Familiar Focus allows our Familiar to spend two actions with the Concentrate trait to get back one of our Focus Points but only once per day. And spell delivery will allow our familiar to deliver touch spells for us. Yes, these are all master abilities, but that's what we want to pick here, is master abilities. However, we are going to get a bunch of familiar abilities for this build, so you may want to pick some for your actual familiar as well. Of course, like all my build videos, we are doing the free archetype for this build. And we want a shadow familiar, mainly for the steel shadow action. For one of its two actions, the familiar can make a melee strike against a creature using your spell attack roll modifier. On a success, the target is enfeebled 1 for 24 hours, and its shadow disappears. Anything that removes the enfeebled condition also restores the shadow. This has the occult trait since we cast spells using the occult tradition. As a sorcerer, we're not going to get that type of familiar unless we take the Familiar Master Dedication. This would give us a Familiar, however, we already have a Familiar, so instead we'll get the Enhanced Familiar Feat, giving us four Familiar Abilities instead of just two. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get our Shadow Familiar for a good long while, but both of the feats at this level will allow us to take one later. At level three, we get our first General Feat. However, I'm just going to go over all the general feats now, since you can take these in pretty much anywhere you want. The general feats that you want to take for this build are the three general feats I always take, which are, of course, Canny Acumen, this time for our Fortitude saves, Die Hard, and Toughness. These will help with our survivability. Our other two general feats we want to take for this build are Fleet and Incredible Initiative. Fleet for more speed, and incredible initiatives so we can get our darkness up right away. At level 4, our first feat is going to be Occult Evolution. With this feat, we become trained in one skill of our choice. Which, if we aren't already, we want to be trained in Intimidation here. For that nice demoralized action. We are charisma based, after all. Once per day, we also get to spend one minute concentrating to add one mental occult spell to our repertoire. The spell only remains in our repertoire until the next time we make daily preparations. But we can use this ability later to add one. We can use this ability once per day. There are a ton of occult spells with a mental trait that would really help this build, but I'm going to cover those in the teamwork reports. On the free archetype side of this level, we're going to take Familiar Mascots. 
Remember all those master abilities I was talking about that we want to take for this build? This is why. When we choose master abilities, we can choose one ally for each master ability to benefit from that ability. Each master ability can only benefit a single character, and you can only select a master ability once unless the ability states otherwise. And then for our ancestry feat at level 5, we'll pick up Mist Child. This will combo extremely well with our Shadow Blending feat. Now, if we're in Dim Light or Darkness, then we can increase the flat check to target us to 8 if we're concealed and 14 if we're hidden. This gives enemies a much harder time targeting us if we're in Dim Light or Darkness. Okay, time for Teamwork Report number 1. At this point, we really don't have all of our cool Darkness stuff yet. But we do have some of it. We have our Darkness spell, our Chilling Darkness spell, and our Grim Tendril spell. Other than our Darkness spells, we do want to focus on mental spells that will debuff the enemies. Which we can either take through Occult Evolution, or through our regular spell slots. Fear, Phantom Pain, and Sleep are all great non-Darkness spells that you should consider taking for this build. Fear and Sleep will debuff the opponents, and Sleep might allow us to completely ignore encounters. At this point, you may be wondering why we need Intelligence for this belt. I mean, extra skills are great, but is there another reason we need it besides that? And the answer is yes, we just haven't taken it yet. At higher levels, we will want to take the Alchemist Dedication. And the reason is because we need Dark Vision Elixirs for this belt. I mean, sure, the other elixirs that we'll be able to make with the Alchemist Dedication will help as well. But the main reason we're taking this is so we can hand out Dark Vision Elixirs to our party members that don't have Dark Vision. So they're not affected by our Darkness spells. We we'll also want to be in Dim Light or Darkness as much as possible. Because that will make it that much harder for enemies to hit us. Which in turn will help us stay up so we can help our party out for longer. Alright, now I'm going to really quickly go through the rest of the feats for this belt. At level 6, we'll start with Advanced Bloodline, which will give us the Steel Shadow Focus spell. Which is the exact same thing as the Steel Shadow Familiar ability, except it does damage and doesn't last as long. Then Improved Familiar makes it a little bit easier for us to get that Shadow Familiar. At level 8, we'll pick up our Alchemist Dedication and Expert Alchemy for those Dark Vision Elixirs. For our level 9 Ancestry feat, we'll pick up Extinguish Light to get rid of that pesky light that's in certain rooms. At level 10, it's Greater Bloodline to get Consuming Darkness. This will do negative damage to foes and slow them down. Then we'll take Incredible Familiar so we can have 6 Familiar abilities and finally get our Shadow Familiar. At level 12, it's Bloodline Focus to get our Focus Points back quicker. Then Master Alchemy for even better Dark Vision Elixirs. For our Ancestry feat at level 13, we'll pick up Shadows of Salt, which will give us Shadow Blast as an innate spell once per day, which will give us a little bit of elemental damage. Then at level 14, it's time for our third dedication, the Shadow Caster dedication. We can no longer cast Light Spells, but we get the Cloak of Shadows Focus Spell. This will help us make our allies harder to see. A rogue in your party will be very happy if you cast this on him. Then it's Unending Emptiness, which will give us the Dark Light spell. This is essentially darkness that does damage and even blinds creatures with dark vision, unlike regular darkness. At 16th, we'll take Greater Mental Evolution. This will give us one spell for our spell repertoire for every level that we can cast. Some more spells to work with. And we'll get even more versatility with our spells with Shadow Reservoir. Our Shadow Reservoir contains one spell for every level except our highest two. We spontaneously cast that spell from our spell reservoir by using a spell slot. At level 17, Crone's Cruelty will let us cast Warp Mind as an innate spell once per day. This will allow us to confuse our enemies in our darkness, making it that much harder for them to get out of it. At level 18, we'll take Bloodline Wellspring to get our focus points back even faster. Then, Secrets of Shadow will give us even more spells in our Shadow Reservoir. For our first level 20 feet, I've gone with Bloodline Conduit. 
So as long as we spend an extra action casting the spell, we can cast 5th level and lower spells without expending spell slots. And our last feat for this build is going to be Shadow Magic. This will give us a Dance of Darkness Focus spell. For 2 actions, we can stride up to half our speed, and at the beginning or end of our stride, we can create a Darkness spell, essentially. We need to make a Performance check, and that determines how long the Darkness lasts. Whether it's one round, two rounds, or one minute. Alright, for today's second teamwork report, it's all pretty simple. You want to use your darkness based abilities to confuse enemies without dark vision. And of course, hand out your dark vision elixirs to those that don't have dark vision in your party. If you run into an enemy with dark vision, then might be a good time to use your dark light spell. Especially since your allies won't be affected by it. Alright guys, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, ding the bell, check out the links in the description below, including my Patreon page. And if you want to see some other teamwork builds, you can check out these videos here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, teamwork is vital.